In the bottom left now, in the blue, looking to put an end to this streak from the Protoss player. His name is Dark. And the upper right in the red, taking down Solar, taking down Maru. It's Max Pax. And I can't get over what an incredible run Max Pax has had over the course of really the, the play day that's been happening, happening today. Solar took down Cyril at the end of day one. He knocked Cyril out of the competition in this $10,000 tournament. And I think for a lot of people, when they saw Cyril really only take one win, only one best of five, they kind of looked at this and they're like, well, you know, Oliver is still there, sure. And, and Max Pax is still there, absolutely. And we have Clem. But it's not looking all that great for, for the West. It's not looking all that great for the non-Koreans. I mean, Cyril taking one series is kind of scary. On a good day, Cyril all kills the entirety of it. And you're like, okay, this is a great way. This is fine. We're good. But, uh... Then Max Pax comes in and he plays what I assume to be. I haven't seen it yet, but a fantastic series against Solar. He absolutely annihilates. He eviscerates Maru in match two of Play Day 2. And now he's running, running into dark here. He's got a two kill streak. Six maps or two series in a row, two best of fives, one in a row. This one's a little different that we got here. Not only is this dark. Right, so that's different. It's a different player. I would argue that you, you run into Solar, you run into Maru. That's one, I mean, it's the same team. It's onside gaming, but it's also a more standard way to play the game. It's a more uh, mid to late game focused way to play the game. And that's not to say that that, Mar that Dark can't go and doesn't have a good late game. He's got a great late game. What it does mean is that Dark is just odd. He plays the game a little weirdly. He's going to build more queens than you're used to. Maybe he's going to build more hatcheries than you're used to. He's going to just play the game slightly differently. And if Max Pax is really good against that really strong macro style, then maybe Dark can find some uh, advantages. Maybe Dark can go and catch Max Pax off guard and, and take him out of the competition and bring us back to some level of parity. Because right now, well, Dark is the second to last player Korea has. You got Dark, and then you got Hero. So Max Pax already by taking down Maru on top of Solar, puts the West in a bit of an advantage. They have three players left. You got Max Pax, who's been playing tremendously well. But on top of that, you know, they say this is a Terran patch. I, I think I've said this is a Terran patch, and the final two players for the West are in fact Terrans. It's Oliveira and Clem. So whichever way you cut it. Even if Max Pax doesn't win this series, it's great news for the West. But uh, again, Max Pax has been playing tremendously well today. He's been playing so well. And now we get to see what's going to happen in this in this third series, in this sixth total best of five of the competition. So Max Pax, he's going to open Stargate. I don't think this surprises anyone, even with all the changes that happened in 5.0.12. It didn't really touch Protoss openers against Zerg. Against Terran, absolutely. It was Stargate... Kind of feels dead. Even if Max Pax made it work against Maru, it, it kind of feels dead. But against Zerg, yeah, queens weren't changed. Uh, early game units in general weren't, weren't really changed. I guess centuries, they last a little longer for Guardian Shield, but that is just about it here. As now Max Pax going to find himself a little bit surrounded on the Adept count, but Oracle on top is going to kill a decent amount of the Lings there. So even as Max Pax loses an adept or two he's gonna be fine gets off pretty much all the map control that the dark has so he gets oh i love this as well larva are are rather tanky larvae are extremely tanky so if you go and you I, they have a lot of armor but 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 they don't uh, the, all that tankiness doesn't matter to spell damage so oracles are able to dive in knocking down potential workers is really not quite as good as killing actual workers, but it's not bad. It's going to work out really nicely for Max Pax as he's just sharking around for now, seeing what's happening at the natural, seeing what's happening at the third, going up to triple Oracle. But this is a pretty, I'm not going to say a tremendously slow twilight, but this does give us some inkling that he has no crazy follow-up in the docket here. This is not going to be some charge that oracle all in that we've seen max Pax do like once or twice in the last six months he's gonna play this pretty standard 
so for now really again it's all about those oracles is dark behind this he's uh he's pumping a lot of units there are 11 roaches on the way he's walking queen here as well and this is a pretty cool thing you can do on solaris because there's the speed zones in the middle of the map they speed things up just a little bit you know is it massive no but it can is it does it will it mean that potentially the protoss is gonna hit is gonna get hit five seconds faster than he's used to and maybe would lose the game because of that absolutely that's a possibility so now here comes dark he's got six queens or five queens running across the map ravagers on the way tons and tons of roaches and max packs only just now getting shield batteries up there's only one in the natural this is not a lot of defense coming out of max packs right now he's got oracles here but they got to be careful stalker dies very quickly and max packs he's gonna have to take some time here he's got more static defense on the way as he just tries to buy time biles on that first shield battery knock it down so quickly and now dark he's wedged his way in between the natural and the third if max packs defends the third dark okay fine runs into the natural that shield battery it's not gonna go down just yet now it does but uh it, it's going down pretty quickly here pylons go down now the way dark loses this is if the reinforcements are a little bit slow and more importantly if dark kind of gets stuck oscillating between the natural and the third base and allows himself to get peeled off a little bit over and over again but he's not doing that he's just at this point he's found the army that he wants to kill it's six stalkers on the north side so he's just starting to kill them now we talk about the ways the dark can lose this game the other way is that there is no creep on this side of the map these queens cannot transfuse themselves and they cannot keep themselves alive if they take enough damage then the oracles then the borders can dive in and try to make something happen but the roaches and the lings are doing such a good job here of zoning everything out that the queens are still pretty dang healthy and that means this third base is just dead dark he hit his timing so tremendously well but we have to take it we have to pay attention to the fact that blink is done for max packs or so done in about 20 25 seconds if he can run across the map with he's got three oracles i guess he lost the voidery at some point with these oracles that he has with this blink stalkers that will be able to trade really nicely against the ravagers maybe not the links if he can do that maybe that's going to be a world but dark is just not giving him that opportunity uh, yes yeah, six workers have gone down this queen might yeah this queen's dead as well so really nice damage coming out of max packs to try to equalize dark was all in on that he only has 36 drones so even as max packs lost his third base even as max packs lost 10 probes five stalkers of void ray a nexus the economy's still not horrible for max packs he's got blink now plus one's on the way rebuilding that third base this actually doesn't feel quite as bad as as i thought it was going to I'm not gonna lie and that feels weird to say because uh, losing your third base losing yeah what was that 10 probes it hurts there's oracles on the other side they did such a good job of cutting max packs back into this game and now max packs blink is done plus one halfway done charge on the way he's gonna have yeah he's down 12 army supply but I think realistically you have all these blink stalkers and you have that quick reinforcement line to the middle of the map with the speed zones max packs might be able to do something here it's not going to be easy certainly not but it is a possibility and i mean let's be real that is uh, a hope is far more than max packs ever thought he was going to have after that the way this game after the way the mid game started so for now biles they're actually going to go and they're going to kill a creep tumor okay that's something but dark now on three bases on 56 drones only he's dropped that hydra den he needs he understands that he needs more against this mass stalker oracle style and uh eight queens they're probably not gonna do it hydras are on the way they trade tremendously well with these stalkers but it they're still expensive and if max packs can hit his timing or if just the zealots can get on top of them that's gonna be really nice but for now biles they're not gonna land in fact they're gonna kill a couple links max packs though he's gotta get on top of this ramp the, the hydra count continues to grow and again the more that that grows the harder it is gonna be for max packs right now so the biles go down they're not gonna hit as Max Pax slowly, steadily tries to wedge his way in. Blinks dodges the Biles once again. And now he finds himself on top of this base. Again, the Biles don't land. But again, Dark is just buying time. It's a 24 army supply lead. Plus one done. Plus two on the way. Charge done here for Max Pax. Everything is completing at the same time. As Max Pax has to wedge his way in somehow, some way. But the Biles are just not letting him. This choke is so small. And it seems like Max Pax is admitting to this idea that this fact that he's not going to be able to wedge his way in he's got his fourth base on the way he's on 58 probes lings on the counter attack are going to try to do something 
But Max Pex just has to sit on the edge of this now. He understands that he can't wedge his way through as much as he's trying, as hard as he's trying, unless he baits out the craziest stasis traps. And for now, that's just not happening. So I want to point this out, by the way. Dark, he's got this army sitting pretty far back with all the Hydras. He has not revealed that. Max Pex has no idea the Hydras are out, of, are out on the map. So he keeps trading against Ling, Roach, Ravager, and he thinks he's safe. But Dark is just getting this around set up over and over again, waiting for the time to strike when he's going to max out, uh, when he's going to have Hydra range, when he's going to have Hydra speed done. And there we go. There's the surround. This is now a fight that Max Pex cannot take. But the Ling's on the backside. This Stasis Trap's going to save him. Max Pex should be able to get out of here by now. He has a high ground to play with. And actually, off creep, he's going to try to juggle a little bit. going to try to knock down as much as he can from this army. More Stasis Traps to play around with. Triggers the leading ropes, knocks that down. Biles are not going to get the Stasis Trap despite everything. And Dark does not get that surround. Doesn't get the trade that he's looking for. And now with 2 1 1, 2 1 on the way, Max Max has that fourth base and a War Prism into the main. He's got angles. If he can save, if he can buy 30 seconds, if he can buy 45 seconds, maybe he's going to have disruptors on the map. And yeah, they've been nerfed. Absolutely. They're, they're worth more supply. They're, they're, they're not as strong as they were. But Max Pex isn't close to maxing out. That's not a problem right now. He just needs the splash damage. So the third base is going to go down. I don't think there's any saving it. There's just too much damage here. Too much DPS from our Zerg player. But the Zealots now finding their way into the natural. Denying that fourth base. It's going to be a three base Zerg against a three base Protoss. As Max Pex already has that fourth base on the way. The Zealots are just wreaking havoc. And Disruptors are getting chronoed out. Max Pex is buying the time that he so desperately needs. But he needs just a little bit more. One Disruptor probably doesn't swing the difference here. It's got to be two. It's got to be three. It's got to be more than that. So Max Pex continues just to wait. The fourth base. I... He's got he's to find a way to save this. There is really no option where he doesn't save this base and stays in the game. So he blinks forward. The Stasis Trap is really nice. But this army finds its way into the natural as well. Disruptor shot. How good is this thing going to be? It's not It's just. It's not going to go out. The roaches kill it. That's such a problem for Max Pex right now. He needs that Disruptor. He needs that damage. So even as he's going to get the fourth base of the Zerg, it feels like Dark has too much here. He really needs a massive Disruptor shot. It's just not ready yet. So the Stalkers blink on down to the bottom side, trying to do as much as they can. There's no overcharge. The roaches, the Hydras are killing the Oracles. Max Pex is just so plugged back against the wall here. More and more reinforcements coming in from the Zerg. Max Pax, he's going to have that Disruptor then coming in from the backside. Can he get the shot? Max Pax, it's going to be big, but it's not going to be big enough here. I don't think they're just, even with the upgrade lead that Max Pax has, I think the base just dies. Well, as I say that, Dark doesn't choose to, get, to knock it down. He chooses to wait. Maybe he has taken too much damage. Maybe that was the saving grace that Max Pax needed, but he doesn't get the fourth. He doesn't kill that base that he so desperately needed to kill. So he's on a three. He's the three base Protoss against a four base Zerg. He Dark can build more drones at any time. But it seems like he, he actually is committing all in once again. More Hydras on the way. Plus one Carapace just about done. That big supply lead, that big army supply lead that Dark had two minutes ago. It's not nearly as strong as it once was. And he didn't totally annihilate the economy of Max Pax. He did a great job. He got a lot of it down. But he didn't kill the third. Or the, what the, he didn't kill what was, was once the fourth base. Became the third base of Max Pax. And now, you know, Max Pax's army. He can find some value with this. Uh, well, again, he doesn't have disruptors. So I was going to say, if he can find value with the disruptors, maybe. But he doesn't have that. Anyway, the Zealots into the third base. Max Pax pressuring on the fourth. One Archon goes down so quickly. And I, I just fail to see how Max Pax gets up the ramp here without Disruptors, without a Colossus, maybe. He really doesn't have a way to get up the ramp. Yeah, he can defend and uh, defend games where it really doesn't feel like he should really even have a, have an option. Shouldn't even really have the opportunity to defend. Uh, as we saw that fight around his third base without any way to dislodge the the zerg this this army that dark has is just way too strong and even only on 64 drones <laughs> that's enough that's a good number that that is more than five one colossus is out on the map extend thermal lens halfway done maybe maybe that's it 
maybe Max pa if Max Pax can survive the three or four Colossus, he's going to be really happy. Dark's just about to max out. And I am not convinced that this is going to happen again. Matt Dark is putting pressure on the left right side at the same time, curtailing the economy. So yeah, Max Pax recalls. He's got to keep this third base alive. Biles, they're going to land on a Colossus, but not kill it. Uh, Max Pax recalled, but he's still going to lose the base that he needs to hold on. I, I, I guess he'd l rather hold on to the fourth. that just has more mineral patches, but the Colossus is dead now. So Max Pax, he doesn't have any splash. He's down to 91 supply. He's held on for quite a while in this game, and he's done a really solid job of it against what really has felt like insurmountable odds. But this game one is going the way of our Korean player. One point on the board in this best of five. And Max Pax, for the first time in four games, finds himself down a map. Mapper left now in the red. He's up a game in this series and uh, looking real strong. For Dragon Kites of Gaming, it's dark. In the bottom, upper right, in the blue, trying to tie it up here. It's Max Max. And if I had a, if I had to hazard a guess, this is not that. I mean, we've seen Max Pax play Dark in online cups. It's not. This is not one of our more common matchups. Uh, Max Pax Dark only played each other ten times over the course of real, really the entirety of the legacy of Legacy of the Void. And I mean, I guess the Legulac thinks that's like, going to be a three zero for Dark, but ten times evenly matched. So that's pretty fun. Uh, Dark though, he's going to do something also fun in this game number two. He's going to take the gold. He's going to go and try to put pressure on now, whether this is Ling pressure, whether he goes into roaches behind this, uh, whether he uses this as a springboard for Lair Tech. I, there are options, especially because there's a rich gas on that. This is an insanely rich base. Not only is it, granted, it's not eight gold patches. It's not a full base worth of income. It's only six, so it's not quite as big as it's like a base and a half more than two bases, but it's also got a rich gas base. It is insanely efficient if you're able to mine from it with with nine drones. You're able to mine as much as what is that? Uh, you're able to mine as much as 22, uh, not nine drones. I'm sorry. With uh, with 15 drones, you're able to mine as much as 22 wood. That's an entire like in the, in the span of timings. That's an entire overlord's worth of supply. That is massive in this game. So Dark's got speed on the way, of course. He's mining only the minerals right now. He doesn't really care about ramping up the gas income, not just yet. And of course, he's got to build extra links. He's got to go up to eight links, 10 links, something like that, because, well, you chrono out a couple of depths and it's really hard for, for Dark to hold this base, especially with there being no wall. It's two mineral patch clumps, so it's very easy to play on both sides. You really need to make sure that you have a ton of links to make sure you're safe on that one. And... Max Pax isn't even going to bother. I mean, he's got an adept on the way. He wants to make sure he's going to be safe, but it's Stargate play all over again. And I am really curious to see just how he's going to choose to punish this. Is that Overlord? I, I didn't talk about it because I thought that Overlord was absolutely alive. There was no way it died. But actually, no. That Overlord goes down. Dark finds himself supply blocked for just a second on that horrible 36 supply mark, uh, although he's got more Overlords on the way, so he's going to be fine. Now Ling's speed done in 10 seconds. This is, it, it's marginally faster than your typical timing. of three, It's like 325. It really, uh, Dark went, instead of rallying uh, drones into the gas, he just pulled them off the mineral line. But regardless, this speed is done. Dark's trying to pressure in uh, off the fact that he can build those early Ling's and not be as economically disadvantaged as you might otherwise be. Because he's got the gold. And his, his workers are just worth more. So... Even if you cut drones for this, you're, you're still fine. He's mining perfect efficiency out of this base. Well, at least out of the minerals out of that base, which is the only thing that, that truly matters for, for Dark at this stage in the game. And now there's a third base behind. So we're not seeing crazy pressure out of Dark just yet. We, we're not seeing Dark go and run pell-mell and pedal to the metal off of two bases. 
Max Pax, though. Max Pax is. Max Pax has, uh, he's got some ideas, shall we say. He's got, he's going up to four gate behind this. No twilight. Well, sorry, there's a twilight. Uh, but, eh, maybe. Uh, I, I think this is going to be, I think this is going to be Stargate Enclaves. This is a, or a different variant of that where you go Stargate units, but you go for pretty crisp timing off this. Yes, Max Pax has his third base on the way. And yes, it's rather fast. But going up to four gates this early is pretty fast. You generally don't go up to that number of gateways this early. So it's four gate, third base. It's going to be Glaives on the way. Uh, it's a very, this is a tremendously greedy build out of Max Pax that he has just cut everything to make this happen. Literally. Oh, actually, I mean, I guess he's got, yeah, he's got drones a little bit. Or he, well, maybe. I, I was going to say he had no ground units, but he's got three adepts and a stalker and he built a second one. What I can tell you is he's not going to have a forge. Like that, that, he is certainly making, kind of making some sacrifices to make this happen. He's not building any ground units on the map right now, even as he did build those ones earlier. And he's doing a good job. He's killing five drones. He's really, the important thing here is that by killing drones on Dark Gold base, those drones are worth more than a drone. Much like the base is worth more than a base. It's worth like a base and a half. Killing drones there, or five drones, that's like killing eight drones. Because again, efficiency on the gold base is tremendously important in this game. It will mine out faster. That's important to know. And it does not have as many minerals as other bases would. But now Max Pax is just ready, getting ready to go. More adepts on the way here. Glaive's done in about 20 seconds. Something like that. We're going to have to see just what happens here. Now, Forge is on the way. Max Pax adding, going up to six gates. He is advancing to the next level of the game. Now, he tries to shoot on top of the Queens, kill those off to make sure the Oracles can fight, but instead, he's just going to kill all the Lings, and Dark really wasn't ready for this. Now, the Queens are very vulnerable. One Oracle goes down, but the Queens are going to fall down in their place, and now into the main base here. Oh, what a spot Max Pax finds. Yes, some of these Adepts will fall, but these Lings, they cannot trade cost effectively at all. Two queens down, drones dead, uh, queens are dead here. Max Pax, he said his timing, and Dark was not ready in the slightest. Twelve drones dead, the queens are falling. I, you know, Dark is the best player in the world at coming back into games. But uh, I, I think my Dark is kind of dead in this one. I, I really struggle to find a way, uh, find a world. As another queen's gonna go down too. Max Pax, I, I understand that's a really good position to put your adepts in, but. Killing the queen is worth it, even if you lose those adepts there. It is absolutely worth it. So now Dark's on five queens. 36 links. He's on half he's on half the drone count. He's on half the drone count of Dark. Or of Max Pax. And Max Pax behind this, he's getting a robo now. Blink is on the way. He's got tons of stalkers at this third base. Dark understands that the only way he wins this game is if he just floods links and, and tries to win off plus one. But the Sim City here is really nice. Now there is one there is one situation where dark does win if he's able to burrow through into the natural there's not a shield battery there that is kind of the one thing just about the one thing that can maybe can maybe help help dark But Max Pax, I mean, <laughs> Dark's Baneland busted him. I, I guess it's two Banelings here morphing in. Max Pax has his army on the other side. And now Dark, this is such a crisp timing for Max Pax. Five seconds plus one's done. It's done right now. This is a, a ton, an absolute ton of, of Lings, though, with plus with plus one. It's like the one thing the Stalkers are afraid of. But even still, there are so many Stalkers here. Adepts as well. And Max Pax is only fighting half the army. The other set of Lings, they're going to find their way in. And yeah, there are, uh, the Adepts will fall. But Max Pax, this... He's going to be able to blink his stalkers down if he wants to. The lings are just not trading cost effectively enough. Five drones went down. Five probes went down, but Max Pax on the other side. He's winning this game. Army supply is now equal. Uh, this is really good. <laughs> it's pretty dang good for Max Pax.
And now I really, I really don't know what is really Dark is supposed to do at this point. He's trying to surround on on Ling's, uh, maybe hold out to a plus two timing, but Max Pex is up 16 army supply against what is pure Ling. There, there's some Bane Ling's uh, morphing in that are going to try to deal with these adepts. But there's so many stalkers and so many adepts here that uh, Max Pax with a good split is going to be more than fine. And this is before the plus two timing anyway, so the Bane Ling's aren't going to be that much more impressive. Max Pax ties it up. Doesn't let Dark get away with the insane greed of that opening. And uh, now we're tied up one apiece. We're going to game three. In the bottom left now, in the red, his uh, his big greed, his massive greed, taking that gold base like that didn't work. Now we're tied up. It's dark. And his opponent looking to go up 2-1, take that advantage, seize that advantage. Precise storm. It's Max Pax. And of course, as we get into game number three of this series, and uh, you've gotten there this far, we've had a couple fun games. I would like to remind you all that if you want Max Pax and Dark and Maru and Serral and Rainer and Cure and uh, and Hero and I, Beyond and all of these fantastic players, pretty much every single day, you should sub to the channel because I can guarantee you most days we're going to have best of threes, best of fives, best of sevens if we're so lucky with all these top players and uh every series is gonna have at least one good is, is gonna have a banger in it that i can promise and of course if you want to catch me live not that i've been live as much recently life has kind of gotten in the way twitch.tv slash bamwolf drop me a follow over there as we take a look at what's happening on alcyone which is apparently the way you pronounce it it's a um alcyone was uh one of zeus conquest zeus's conquests I, if i re remember from looking that up right it's ancient greek uh, and Alcyone is kind of a fun map. It's two maps in one. These, of course, you have this this north side or this uh, northwest side. But you have the Zonaga Tower, and it's where most people play. And then you have these mineral walls. And uh, it's pretty easy to proxy something, and it's not all that easy to scout. So you got to be careful about how you do things. Uh, it's not that bad. It, it you, you A single drone can mine through this wall, but... Uh, you do have to be careful. You have to be paying attention to it. Now, the trick, of course, if you want to see if uh, the wall has been mined out, is when you send your scouting probe in, in fog, if you click it onto this side of the map and it actually paths there, you'll know that something's been mined out and there's likely a proxy. If it paths, if it doesn't path there, if your pathing is a little bit different, uh, then you know that there's, in fact, a wall. Or that, that, that it has not been mined out. So, pretty solid way to take a look at things. Um, I think the next level play is to just mine a uh, spot of the wall out and then just not put anything there. Just to send your opponent into a tizzy because it's so hard to scout everywhere. It takes so long to scout everywhere on, on the bottom side of the map that it's just, you know, the mind games. But third game in a row and third Stargate game in a row for Max Pax. Now, granted, uh, it's hard to call last game a Star. Yes, he opened with Stargate. But it's hard to call that last game a Stargate game. As Max Pax eh, flubs that micro a little bit. He gets a drone, but he will lose an adept. Yeah, he'll lose an adept for it. He could have. I, I think he'll lose the adept anyways, but I think he gets one more Ling if he is a little bit cleaner on that micro. He um, he canceled a shot. He canceled a backswing on a shot that should have that should have killed a Ling. Small things, but uh, you know, just a little bit, a little bit imprecise, a little bit inefficient. There is uh, this Ling timing is so nice from Dark. They're gonna find the third base pretty much as it goes down, and with five links, it's not it's not a ton of DPS. And actually, I guess it's not gonna be enough DPS at all because the Oracle is there. Dark is gonna click on that third base anyways because he wants to force the Oracle to stay at home. He wants to force energy out of it, which he does. And that means now that this Oracle is not going to have the aggressive potential that Max Pax would like on the other side. And by the way, I don't know whether it was focusing on the Overlord, the Adept Micro, whatever it was. Max Pax is supply blocked and has been pretty heavily for quite a while. That was that was a 15 second, nah, 10 seconds on 46 out of 46, which is not where you want to be. These early game supply blocks, they matter so much. If you go and you get supply blocked, at 150 out of 150 and you're kind of in this game state where no one really wants to attack uh 
it can be it can matter less but otherwise i mean in the early game it really it slows your economy down it slows your tech down which are by far the most important things is uh darks go you know what they nerfed the hell out of this like three patches ago because we were tired of seeing queen walks all the time and darks just doing it anyways game one it, it worked but in part because max max scouted it so late he's scouting it pretty late again though no static defense he's got a cannon shield batteries on the way he scouted it a little bit faster he's taking a look at it eh, just a little bit faster uh than it was previously but we're just gonna have to see if he's gonna be able to hold on so Ling's roaches and queen steamrolling onto the other side of the map 39 drones again dark is very committed with this he's got no layer no speed no upgrades it's all about this push right now and we have no stasis traps ready so it really will all be about the oracle dps as much as they can find it again queens have no transfusion so for now force fields go down they're going to try to deny delay timing as much as possible that's a good force field right there that's a dead queen so now only four queens on the map this is looking a lot more holdable for max packs if he can get this down to maybe three queens maybe two queens he pumps oracles out suddenly these oracles will kill everything so for now that's a dead ravager you gotta dive on top of the queens maybe just play on the edge of things that will be dead oracle though and three oracles and nearly as strong as four are so biles go down this is a dead cannon and that again is cutting into the defensive tools that max Pax has but now we're, we're in this situation we talked about in game one where dark can kind of get caught between the main and the third or the natural in the third and then it gets a little bit awkward more queens are going to go down here more biles kill more static defense and even as we're saying, hey, Dark's kind of getting stuck between these armies. The, ar the reinforcements are proving again to be that much more powerful. The Queens have to go down if Max Pax wants to take this fight. But he doesn't have the energy on the Oracles right now. So he can't really do what he wants. I, I you get to a point there with Oracle energy, with enough Oracles where he could just burst things down. But now his third base is dead. Regardless of how it looked a little bit better for Max Pax this time, I, Darks hit his timing properly. The third base is dead and Max Pax is dead. Dark is going to go up 2-1 in the series and uh, putting Max Pax, his life on the line here, trying to equalize the number of lives available to our Western team. Let's see. There are potentially two more maps. Let's see what Max Pax does. And now game four in the bottom left, looking to put this away, looking to move on to D number three, play day number three. His name is Dark. And on the upper right, in the red, back against the wall, looking to take us to game five. Max Pax. Man, I love Hecate. It's such a pretty map. I, the, the magical spider webs maybe what we're gonna call them uh in the main bases are just they're so nice this sparks so much joy uh of course much like i i guess this map pool is very much uh ruled over by people that really do love uh greek names of course hecate is the the greek goddess of magic and uh you know that's why i call them magical cobwebs i that's all i got uh but it is it is truly a pretty map and um i i'm so happy that we had a map pool what was it two three map pools ago where everything was just kind of this gray industrial blah it was the it was the equivalent <laughs> it was the map pool equivalent of middle america and this is not great in fact man, i can't remember what the two map be. I, i'm so bad at remembering map names that are no longer in the pool uh but we had two maps that i literally you know that looked at least from the tiling were nearly identical and it, it's like you know you remember that one of them has a rich gas base forward on the map a little bit and one didn't but it really 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 samey and i know we've complained about how the last map pool was very samey and how it played all maps were kind of big and uh kind of, they played very similarly but uh this map pool is neither very samey based on how it looks i mean it's very visually distinct maps and it's not all that samey based on how it plays it, I, the maps are pretty they're extremely diverse. We have maps that half of it, it's effectively an island map walled off by uh, by mineral patches. We have maps with awkwardly placed gold bases and, and extremely rich bases that are gold and gas and or just gas or just gold and small maps, big maps, large maps. And of course, 
that's one of the benefits of a nine map pool you can you can have a lot more variance in your map pool and still allow, allow players to play the maps that they want to play and the best thing i don't think that i don't know if they use that veto uh for this setup but the best thing is the veto setup that we have for best of fives and best of sevens for esl events uh now i think best of three could probably be done a little bit better which is a shame because again you see more best of threes than anything else but for best of fives esl took a page out of a bunch of mobas where there are sequential picks and ban phases where you start and for best of five you get to ban a couple maps then you pick a couple maps then you ban more maps and then you pick the remainder maps and i think there's maybe a second ban phase in there which is so cool players can force maps if maru desperately has a map that he's really good on that no one else is and he wants to practice it he can be rewarded for practicing that map or i guess maybe maru is not a good response because uh, maybe not a, a good example um if a laser for example wants to grind ah, um it's not rapscallion it's not radagast uh that that the map that everyone's banning if he wants to grind that and become really good at that map and figure out all the intricacies and figure out build specific to it if he gets into a best of five scenario he can force that map he can force players on a map that they are just not familiar with which is so it, it rewards players for playing differently and i love that so much but for now it's a void ray opener for max Packs in this game number three maybe a little bit less vulnerable to queen walks compared to uh that triple oracle style is certainly uh, we're gonna have to see what Max Pax finds. He's gotten an Overlord, he's gotten a Ling, and he's gonna get a. He's not gonna get a drone. He tried. He committed for it and took some help, some hull damage, but not much more than that. And behind this, he has built a couple Oracles. So that's just that Void Ray early, uh, hoping that that uh, that Dark put a couple Overlords on the map. And Dark, seeing the Oracles and seeing the Void Rays and knowing what's happening here, that's an immediate Nidus. That was a very quick layer, by the way. We didn't talk about it because I decided to, to you know, wax poetic about maps because I care a lot about maps. Uh, but this is a night of play coming out of dark in this game number four of our series, which is a great time to do it. You're up a map. You have a map to give. It's a uh, Stargate opener, so you think you can get away with it that way. It's, this is Queen Ling, by the way, not Queen Roach. This is just lots of Lings, lots of Queens trying to hit that timing before Max Max has... The next level of tech off the Stargate. Kind of like what a Queen Walk wants to do, just a little bit differently. Uh, but yeah, this was a very quick lair coming out of Dark and Max Pax. Uh, you know, he actually... This Void Ray is so nice for him because he's not... There is no Nidus that's going to go up into the main base. It's going to have to go up outside of the third. And that is so much better for Max Pax. He's going to be... In fact, wait, the Void Ray is just going to see this. Max Pax, he finds, he finds the Nidus here. Stalkers are going to kill it. I talked about how this is uh, this is a good time to do it, and it absolutely is, but nothing pops out of this. The Nidus will not happen. And now Dark's just down 15, 15 workers. He's going to drop a Nidus somewhere else, uh, even safer this time. So this one should get up, but I mean, the Lings are trying to trade into double shield battery, into Stalkers, into Depths, and Blink. I, Blink is halfway done. So I think that's the one thing we have to talk about. Blink will not be complete by the time this happens in earnest and now dark second night is head on the way so this is going to be pretty cool we're going to see him go put one night is up to the third we're going to put one night is outside or outside of the natural one night is to the third and try to ping pong between that natural and the third base location making life hard but this void ray it does so much bonus damage to armored units that it's so hard for dark to do what he wants to do it's just you can't get it up <laughs> It uh dark struggles to get it up in this game the void ray just if he finds it he kills it simple as nidus nidus heads are armored units and now dark he's droning behind this he's gonna try to go for i'm assuming some sort of swarm host play but this is not a good swarm host map it is so far if you want to put a nidus here to go into the main it is so far to go into the main base there's no rock wall that you can hide behind to do something like that this is just Okay, yeah, I like this a lot more. Okay, that, that's all I was gonna say, man. If you're going Stormhost Nidus off, this is a last ditch effort. It's just not good. It is not a good solution. But if your option is, oh well, you know, I'm gonna get a couple infestors. They're gonna have fungals as they pop. They're gonna be a really sol a solid answer to blink stalkers and charge lots as I get myself ready and try to recover from this game. Yeah, I like that a lot more. And Dark's infestors are second to none. Yeah, we talk about how Cyril is really, uh, really good with his neuroplay. Well in one specific way dark is just 
in my mind, he's the best Infester player in the world. And it really, Terrell's the only one that comes close. But oh, Max Max dodges the fungal. So half of that investment, 150 of that gas investment, just not, not doing anything at all. As uh, now Max Max going to find the Ursadon, but not going to kill it. Oh, Ursadak, excuse me, not the Ursadon. We got to... We have to make sure that the flora and fauna of Hecate are, are respected properly. As, um, gotta, gotta call them what they are. And this Voidaway is just gonna put slow, pe slow pressure on the fourth base, force Dark to respond to it, or Dark loses his fourth, but uh, he can't because this army of Max Packs is putting so much pressure on the third that all the Queens, all the Roaches, the Ravagers have to be there. In fact, Max Packs is up in army supply. So this army for Max Pack, it's up in upgrades. It's got charge, it's got blink, it's got a warp prism. Did the No, the Void just decided to back up, I guess. I, I thought Max Pax was just gonna kinda click on that base and, and force Dark to make a reaction, but it's not gonna happen. As now Max Pax, he's got the zealots forward, he sees the infester, and eh, okay, not worth it. So we're gonna go to next round. Charge lot, blink stalker. It got value, it got pressure on, and uh I don't like this. I mean, I, I like this run by from Max Pax. It's what you got to do. It's a good, it's a good idea. But the fact that he didn't just sit the Void Ray on top of that base and kill it, I, I think it was a mistake. I think he very easily, just because of how much pressure the charge lots and the, the stock is represented, I think he very easily could have gotten that base or forced enough of the army of Dark over to the right side that he put, he that he kills the third or kills a lot of Dark's army. I, I, he could have put, he really could have put Dark into a Devil's Bargain. But for now, we go on. Colossus on the map. We got one of them. One Disruptor. Extend Thermal Lance on the way. Kind of weird to see Max Pax go in one Colossus, one Disruptor out of this instead of going up to four Colossus, then moving into Disruptors or three Colossus or whatever it is. But he's got his reasons. He wants to make sure that he's both types of Splash at the same time. Colossus, fantastic against Lings. Uh, Disruptors, incredible against Roach Ravager. And Dark's just desperately trying to get to the round, the level of tech that will allow him to stabilize this game that's lurkers by the way that's lurker and fester is so hard to fight oh this this colossus that's a great fungal this colossus goes down really quickly there's no extent thermal lance it has to go forward it doesn't have the range that it needs but now zealots into the main base zealots into the third and max packs putting pressure on the fourth but those fungal bile combinations are so good even still this base is dead there is I don't care that those fungals were good. Max Pax, he set up his multi-prong too dang well. But of course, uh, yeah, Dark, Dark's going into Lurker play because it really is his last... Oh, this disruptor shot. Oh, it's so good. But the fungals, they're going to lock things in place. Biles on top of this army. So Max Pax is a little bit of trouble right now, even as good as that first disruptor was. Second one, not quite so strong. Disruptors will fall. This Colossus, there's no saving it. No way. It's, yeah, it's not going to survive. So Max Pax. Oh, no, no. How does that disruptor live? I don't know. But Max Pax, even as Dark, is moving into this next stage of, okay, well, you know, you, uh, theoretically, Mass Lurker against Ground Toss is solid and until we get to Storm, D Storm, Four Colossus, Archon, Disruptor, like that really immortal, this really late game army. Um, it's really good against Ground Toss. Max Pax is already leapfrogging that guy, though. He's just... <laughs> understanding that this commitment to lurkers means that given dark's economy he's a three base zerg uh, there will not be enough anti-air absolutely not so already we're into carry there's a mothership on the way which is super cool this is the new mothership it uh it has been vastly retuned it's a lot faster now and it, it costs 100 less minerals 100 less gas cloak is now an active ability everything nothing on the mothership requires energy now now it's all their timer to active abilities Oh, those are the big ones, really. Um, I think those are the big ones. I think they, they changed time warp a little bit, but I, I don't remember what it was. And uh, well, recall just kind of stays the same. It, it's a, it's better, of course, because the mothership is fast. But other than that, it's uh, really not all that great. This is an awkward spot. This is such an awkward fight for Max Max to take, but the disruptors are going to be pretty solid anyways. 
and lurkers will fall with carriers on top we have seven height four hydras excuse me um a couple queens there, there, there really is not a lot of anti-air here I, I guess spores are, are decent with transfuses or they're gonna try max packs he's not maxed out just yet but uh this army that he has is just really really hard for matt for dark to deal with and by the way hydras aren't all that good against against uh carriers anyways i mean yeah they, they have carapace that makes them a little bit better but it really they're not incredibles now that's gonna be an abduct and that is not even gonna be a dead carrier not easily max packs kites it away it gets low another abduct kills it but uh there's not another abduct ready so queens are gonna try to get on top of this they will finally get that carrier down but at the expense of their very lives and now where are we going on the recall into the natural here now this is still scary everything on the, everything on the ground will die to the lurkers but in the air uh there's cloaking there's no detection here max packs this is the end game fight max packs wins game number five excuse me game number four and takes us to game number five the bottom right in this fifth and final game here of our series his name is dark and in the upper left in the blue trying to just add that extra notch to his belt taking down solar taking down maru now trying to take down dark it's max packs what an interesting map now, of course, Oceanborn has been the subject of a little bit of controversy because there's a spicy space whale on one side of this map. As we can see, the shadow right there. But it's not on the other side. There is no spicy space whale on the north side of the map, only the south side. And uh, plenty, pl plenty of players have complained that it is just too confusing. It's, it's too distracting. And uh, the fact that it's only on one side leads to you know, so some symmetry issues or... Um, Symmetricity issues, whatever the word is, uh, where you know it's more distracting for one player than the other, which is not great. So, ESL, this is not the version of the map we're on yet, but uh, ESL, I think yesterday, two days ago, uh, released a map that said, Hey, yeah, we just removed that. They, they made some fixes to other things, like um, I don't have the map names down yet, but uh, there's a map that has a broken Reaper Cliff where the pie you can it, Reapers can kind of get stuck, it's not great. Uh, but they're making a lot of uh, a lot of fixes to all those maps, and uh, those will be at least deployed, even if not on the ladder. Who knows what what happens with that? But uh, they will be deployed on the. Um, they are they are available for custom maps. They will be available for tournament play. Things like that. But now, as the or the uh, the cyber court is just about to complete here, we ask ourselves one simple question: Does Max Pax open Stargate for the fifth time in a row? Now it's very standard to open Stargate. You absolutely tend to do that. And probably nine games out of 10, maybe eight games out of 10, a Protoss player will do that. But I was gonna say in this series, who knows, maybe we don't see that. But yeah, Stargate's on the way for Max Packs. Now there's the warp gate on the way behind this. Uh, we we already had some tells. This was, there's not a stalker, right? Generally, if you open, if you go Twilight or something, or just don't open Stargate, you will get that stalker, but it is more gas expensive. So Getting the Adept early on is generally a tell that you're opening Stargate anyways. So, Max Packs with an Adept on the map here. Second one on the way. He's got the Stargate just about done. And we're not seeing anything crazy coming out of Max Packs. Or out of Dark, excuse me. So... In fairness, you know, this is Oceanborn is not one of the crazier maps. It's not like there's uh paired golds in the middle of the map or something. It's just it's it's a more standard map. Um it's got this line of sight blocker in the in the middle, which you can play around. It's got a pretty exp this is a tremendously exposed fourth slash fifth base. Uh but yeah, Max Pax. This is interesting though. He's opening up a uh, Void Ray once again, keeping himself safe, a little safer against the Queen Walks. Uh, ideally, if you think your opponent puts two Overlords on the map, that's when you open Void Rays because that's kind of where it pays for itself. Uh, if you open, if they only put one Overlord on the map, you're not quite as efficient as you would like, but it's not that big of a deal. So 
Max Pax, he's not going to get a second Overlord. They're already back under the Aegis of the Queens. But, you know, he tried. Like, <laughs> I understand why that Space Whale is distracting. I look at them like, wow, is, that the, is the Void Ray over there that quickly? No, it's not. It's, um, Void Ray flying under the shadow of its far larger, uh, far larger friend. So. Actually, you know, it's fitting that we, we got a Void Ray opener in this game. You know, it's a, a similar silhouette. And there are, of course, plentiful tales of whales uh, matching pace with sailors over the course of, uh, you know, over the course of these long sea journeys, making friends with them. Um, dolphins as gar guardians of the sea, or dolphins as guardians of the sea, things like that. So, yeah, space whales, guardians of void rays. Makes a whole lot of sense. But look at what Dark's doing. Oh, it's a Mio Micah build. Game five, he's pulling out the SCA cheese. I love this. And this just makes a lot of sense. This is not... Uh, Hydras were buffed. At least Hydra timings were buffed. They weren't quite buffed to the level where the initial patch notes had them act actually... Uh, first of that they both sped up... They, they sped up upgrade, upgrade timing. And they, they, they brought Hydra range and Hydra speed into one upgrade. Like, you, you were... It was a 76 second to get both upgrades. I think it was what it was. Which is just insanely fast. It is... It was the craziest buff. Uh, it would have been absolutely broken against Protoss. But even still, this Hydra time and coming out of dark is going to be incredibly scary against these target openers the Max Pax has been playing with. Now, give him enough time. He's going to have Blink Stalkers. Even then, Blink Stalkers against Hydra Ling, not incredible. Not all that good. You want Zealots and you want, I mean, Harris the Thought. You want a Defs maybe, but uh, really what you want is Storm. You want Storm, you want uh, some other version of Splash. As well, Hydra Ling is, is tons of damage and really tanky against single target stuff. Against Splash damage, <laughs> they die. But Max Pax not going for that. This is not going to be Twilight into Charge Light Arc on Storm like we, ha we saw. There was a meta where that was happening pretty consistently. This is Stargate into Blink. This is the way Max Pax has been playing pretty much every game this series. And... I think Dark's caught on to it. I think he's figured out what's happening. But uh, Max Pax gets the scout now. He sees the Hydras on the map. And that's very early for Hydras. So we now ask ourselves a very simple question. How do you... Okay. I was going to say, we ask yourself the question, how Max Pax chooses to respond. And it's, it's pretty simple. Second Robo. Robo Bay on the way. I think this is just for Mass Disruptor. You don't have time to get Colossus out. Ed. Interesting. Okay. This is cool though dark uh, it seems like he's not even good now that he's been scattered out he's not even gonna try to hit the timing but he's adding an infestation but he's adding a lurker and he's doing the whole oh you know that i know that you know that i'm going for this so i'm gonna go for something else as uh he's gonna poop a bunch of creep out of those overlords as well i it would have been fun it, you can actually hide buildings by putting a bunch of over overlords having them poop the creep putting them right over the building and you know, but uh, Dark's just not doing that. So it seems like he is getting somewhat set up for the push, but I don't think he's going to commit to this too hard. And actually, Max Pax is building Colossus. I didn't think he was going to go for it. I didn't think he was going to have the time for it, but uh, it seems like Max Pax uh, knows that his opponent knows that he knows that his opponent knows that he knows that there's going to be this Hydrolink timing. So... His read on this is that Dark is going to delay things. His read on this is that Dark may try to hit a timing, but uh, hit it a little bit later, which buys time for double Colossus for extended thermal lance, going up to four Colossus probably. And, and Blink Stalker Colossus is pretty dang powerful. But Max Pack's fourth base already canceled once. And now Lurkers are on the way, but Dark found himself briefly supply blocked. He's got five Overlords. That's going to get fixed, but... The Lurker count, not insane. And in fact, the Mineral count for Dark, not quite high enough to just spit out 10, 10, 10 Lurkers or something. So we're all kind of in this awkward scenario now where Max Pax is timing down 23 army supply. is actually really strong. If he can hit with, uh, well, if he can hit with charge and if he can hit with plus two and extend Thermal Lance in about 30 seconds from now. Dark, I think is going to be maxed out, but he's not going to have the Lurker upgrades yet. Hive just completed so if he can hit that timing with four Colossus, all this stuff, I, he's got an option. He's got an opportunity. 
We're going to have to see just how much of an opportunity he has. But for now, Lings do fall. Ground, ground weapons done in one second. Thermalance five, charge 10. This is Max Pax's timing. And he's getting started. Zealots into the natural, Warpins into the main. And Max Pax, he just wants to run it straight up the gullet here. No bothering with that fourth base. But the Warp Prism goes down and that's a problem. Now there will be no safes against the Lurkers burrowing on top. There will be no triple pronged aggression here. And Max Pax, this timing that he wanted to go for, it's just, it's not nearly as strong. There's no detection. There is no detection in this army. Max Pax, he's got to be so careful. He's cornering out an observer. He's cornering out a warp prism. He's got observers onto this side of the map now. But this fight is so much harder than it was than if he'd had his opponent split up. And I mean, look how much damage these lurkers do. Seismic Spines is done now. That timing Max Pax was looking for, it's just not here. He may still try to go for it anyways, but I don't like this. Max Pax has got to leapfrog. He's got to get a fifth base maybe uh, maybe add disruptors maybe that's going to be the play move up to the fleet beacon extra stargates maybe that but fighting head on in this army is just not the play it doesn't feel good now he's going to get one lurker he's going to get a couple but i just look how much damage these stalkers are taking from two lurkers with only plus one i mean it's only going to get worse the lurker count just we're on 15 lur well 14 lurkers now this is a number of lurkers here that max packs I, I don't think he can break and he's got Lurker run by his Lurker drops into the main base. The natural here. Dark has him checkmated. His supplies are good. Absolutely. The supplies are good in this game. Max packs 123 army supply, but his economy is getting shredded and he's pretty much forced to go all in. And the problem is killing this fifth base of Dark isn't enough. That does not make the difference. He's got to do more. He's got to find the soft and vulnerable underbelly of this Zerg player. But there are 15 Lurkers. Dark could build more if he wants to. He's killing the third base of Max Pax. And, and now we're just watching a Protoss player slowly, uh, slowly bleed out. Slowly bleed out. I... Uh, it's a pain to see Max... It's painful to see Max Pax go out this way because I truly don't know what he's supposed to do. If he kills the Lurkers, then I, he still doesn't have detection with this army. He's not killing them. The Lurkers, finally, there comes the, over, the Observer. But I mean, these Stalkers are so low. Yeah. He killed that army. But now he's about to lose a fourth base, maybe. Third base now. His opponent is on. He's, Dark's on four. He's got a fifth base on the way. Lurkers finally get dealt, but it's 28 dead probes. It's going to be on the disruptors. It's going to have to be on the disruptors. Two are on the map, two more on the way, but Lurkers are getting added, or Vipers are getting added in. And disruptors, I, Vipers are the ultimate answer to, 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 to Robotech. Of course you can go and uh go for uh, feedbacks or something but max max doesn't have, doesn't have the tech for that and realistically even if disruptors are pretty good against lurkers it's two disruptors versus 16 lurkers it, it requires so much more so max Pax, this is his last army this is his last ditch effort here he's gonna have to try to break our, our zerg player and by the way dark's got a nidus he's got a tech counter attack whenever he wants he can start to really just eat max Pax out from the inside but for now, he doesn't have to. He's going to lose a Lurker. That's fine. Although, in, in fairness, Max Pax's supply is really good. He's <laughs> 131 army supply, but there we go. Knight is popping up into the main base here. Max Pax, he wasn't already on a timer. He's on a timer right now, and he's just waffling. He's in the middle of the map. He truly doesn't know what to do here. Does he go back home and defend? Yeah, I guess. Take a fourth base, add a fleet beacon, but Lurkers are already here. Second Knight is into the main base now. Two Zealots do not defend this. It's going to force a recall. And Max Pax, there's no way he fights this. The Sim City is working so against him right now. Look at the supply drop. I, no way. Absolutely no way does this ever work here. The, the Queens show up as well. So the, the air, yeah, the air is dead. Everything is dead. Uh, disruptors, they're going to get canceled by these lurkers. Max Pax, he fought long. He fought hard. He killed Solar. He killed Maru. But he's not going to kill Dark. Dark equalizes things. And now... Two lives left for the West. It's Clem, it's Oliveira. Dark keeps his alive. Hero remains untouched for the Koreans. We're moving on to the final day here. Two lives apiece. Dark, he's going to win it.